tiny Himalayan kingdom of Bhutan certainly seems to be an easy place to be happy. The people have free education, free healthcare, and some of the most beautiful natural scenery in the world. So it's perhaps not surprising that 95% of Bhutanese people claim to be very happy with their lives. Feel happy, what do you have? Satisfy, what do you have? Our uh, king is looking after us very nicely. Money is not uh, everything. Our best thing would be like our culture, identity. The Bhutanese government considers the happiness of the people to be the most important thing in any decision or policy that it makes. So gross national happiness is more important than gross domestic product. But is that the whole story? We suspect there may be a little more to it than that. So that's what we're here to find out. And hopefully we'll find the secret to happiness and maybe indulge in a little luxury along the way too. To find out more, we head to see an expert in the capital city of Timpu. As a Buddhist um, country, we do have those values intact where, say, where it says, okay, materialistic, you know, material, wealth, money, that's not the end. These are just the means to reach a certain end, that is happiness. Well, the people of Bhutan certainly seem to know how to have fun. Archery is the national sport of Bhutan and they've been playing it for hundreds of years. Yeah. They're also known across the world for their amazing festivals of music and dancing. We're lucky enough to catch this performance at the Taj Hotel in Timpu. This is the most luxurious place to stay in the capital, so it gives guests the chance to find plenty of happiness of their own. In recent years, super luxurious hideaways have popped up throughout the country. So it's not surprising that a host of celebrities from Drew Barrymore and Richard Gere to Kira Knightley are coming here for a slice of secluded paradise. Perhaps the Bhutanese are so happy because they're surrounded by nature. 72% of Bhutan is covered in virgin forest, which means it's not only carbon neutral, but it's the world's only carbon negative country. So we're heading out into the countryside to get to the heart of the matter. But before we go, we have to show you a Bhutanese traffic light. There was a traffic light here for about three days a few years ago, but people didn't like it so much, so they brought the old traffic wardens back. It's actually quite fun driving a Range Rover here because the King himself is known to get about in a vehicle just like this, so we cause a bit of a stir wherever we go. At the break of dawn in a village outside Prinaka, a local market opens for business. 80% of Bhutan's population work the land as farmers. It's a hard life, but somehow they manage to keep a smile on their face. Mm. Good government, beautiful natural surroundings, and strong family values certainly all contribute to Bhutan's gross national happiness, but there's one thing that underpins it all. Bhutan is one of the world's few purely Buddhist nations, and in fact, one in every hundred citizens is a monk. So we hit the road again, and we can tell we're on our way to the spiritual heart of the nation by the pilgrims we start to see along the way. It's a long and hard journey, but it's made all the more perilous by the fact we've just entered Yeti territory. According to the locals, yetis roam these hills and just one glimpse of one can kill you on the spot. The Tiger's Nest Monastery is the most important spiritual site in Bhutan and we're lucky enough to catch the High Lama to ask his thoughts on the key to happiness. <laughs> It seems fitting to end our journey here at the Puntan Dechen Podrong, which I believe translates to the Great Palace of Happiness. 
Throughout our time here in Bhutan, we've seen that this place is changing fast. And in times to come, we can expect to see some of the problems that we experience in the West as part of a developed urban life. But for now, Bhutan has something truly magical about it. And the locals have plenty of reasons to be the happiest people on Earth.